Yeah. <laughs> Hi, friends. Do you really? What's your name? Uh, Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> My friends here know that people come by, so that's Mark. <laughs> hey, man, it has been a while. Thanks for uh, joining me today. Uh, let me tell you a little bit. I just you. I just came off the longest break all year. Uh, woke up Saturday morning and my phone died, so I, I couldn't do any broadcasting uh, for several days till they got a new phone sent to me. And then I've been a little under the weather. Anyway, it's great to be back in the saddle. And here I am painting. Man, what I'm what I'm supposed to, what's supposed to be my normal job, <laughs> plain air painting. Uh, for some reason, as I look back over this past year, I seem to have done less plein air painting than, than any time in recent memory. As you know, I've done lots of other stuff, but I haven't done a lot of plein air painting. So I consider this, in fact, not only plein air painting, but plein air painting in downtown Raleigh is my native habitat. I think of that line from one of the Muppets movies for some reason. A bear in his native habitat. A Studebaker. <laughs> It's just, just me. Sorry, I love that line. Anyway, um, here painting downtown. Gorgeous fall day. I mean, a little bit brisk, especially downtown. Uh, but just absolutely gorgeous day. <clears throat> Isn't it, Mark? <laughs> Where are you from? Are you? Are you just visiting Raleigh or have you just moved here? Are you? Well, I hope it goes well for you. So, yeah, I'm going with Horizon Low today. And what I hope to capture here is just, um, okay, vanishing point. Kind of important when you're, kind of important when you're painting a city street. <laughs> have a, have a vanishing point. There it is. Um, just want to capture, I don't know what it is, the... The hustle and bustle, I don't mean that, I don't even mean that by people. This is, as we speak, this is Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving here in the United States. And uh, so actually downtown is kind of dead, which suits me just fine because I got to park right there. Doggone, what a great parking lot, uh, par parking luck, I mean to say. Um, but the, 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 the snap of the air, the colors, the... The uh, fall colors are just gorgeous, and um, I'm standing in the shade right now, which of course that'll be changing very soon. Um, but um, standing in the shade, looking at the sun hitting all these gold leaves down the street. Um, I showed that to you just a minute ago with, the, with my title shot there. I don't care so much whether this is a painting of, it will be a painting of downtown Raleigh, but I want it to be just a, a quintessential autumn, fall uh, cityscape. They've already got the Christmas wreaths up on the lights, of course. I'm sure those are called holiday wreaths, you know. <laughs> but anyway, there. And yes, there's a, enough people walking down that I'll include people on the sidewalk. There's a bunch of people. You recognize that, don't you? <laughs> you know people when you see them, don't you? And um, here's some building. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm waiting for that yellow-orange stuff to dry. And it's not dry yet, so I'll proceed to do... Uh, some drawing in pencil. Ah, just absolutely a gorgeous day. Wish you, go, wish you all could be here. Just one of those days I stepped out my front door this morning and just it smelled like fall. I don't know what that smell is. A little bit of, little bit of acidic bite. A little bit of the, the, you know, the decay of leaves. But it's a sweet decay. It's a, a little bit of a musty smell. And just, just, one of, you know, glad to be alive kind of days. Hallelujah. <laughs> I 
Um, I believe the air is fairly... Oh, man, there's this gorgeous thing happening right down here. Um, let me show you what I'm looking at again, just for fun. Okay, hang on. See if you can catch this. So there's um, the spot of light on the sidewalk right beyond, right beyond those people. See that white, that real white spot on the sidewalk? And then in contrast to that, I mean, look at that. Those uh, awnings and that flag. I mean, that, that could be a painting. <laughs> it's already snowing here in Finland. <laughs> I'm sure. I grew up in, in uh, Michigan in the United States. And, uh, and uh, I remember as a kid, it, was all, it always seemed so peculiar to me that by the time Thanksgiving came along and, you know, Thanksgiving we have, you know, harvest time and all that kind of stuff. And, and by the time Thanksgiving got here as a kid, you know, we'd had snow for three weeks already. <laughs> you know, harvest was way over. So th thanks, for, thanks for the shout out from, from Finland. And I know exactly what you're talking about. It's already... <laughs> uh, and you know, by the way, for those of you, for you of the northern climb, um, you know, every, every part of the country, every part of the world has its own charm and beauty, you know. And um, I must say that in North Carolina, people talk about fall color. If I'm being sweet and in a good mood, I just keep my mouth shut because I grew up in Michigan and Canada. Um, yeah, we don't have fall color in North Carolina. <laughs> but don't tell any of the North Carolinians that. They don't know. <laughs> I remember one time years ago listening to a... Was I listening or reading? I don't remember. I was reading something. And uh, somebody was looking at the fall colors, like in Maine or Vermont or Michigan or Wisconsin or something like that, looking at the fall colors. And they said to their friend, don't you suppose that's just a little overdone? <laughs> as if nature, as if the colors of nature can be overdone. What they were getting at was like the, the colors in, in that part of the country are just so spectacular your brain kind of, your brain does a little bzzik, <laughs> bzzik, right? Your brain does a little bzzik trying, trying to take it in because it just can't quite register that those colors are coming off all the trees in front of you there. Speaking of trees, by the way, that's a good way to draw trees right there. If you're an artist, I hope you're taking note. Uh, some of my favorite, two of my, you've, two of my favorite city painters, their ghosts, I am happy to say, hang over me uh, always these days when I'm doing a, a cityscape. They are uh, Tibor Negi, Tibor Negi, N-A-G-Y, Tibor N-A-G-Y of, uh, blah, 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 uh, oh man, forgive me, Tibor, Latvia, Lithuania? Latvia. I forget. Eastern Europe, anyway. Sorry about that. I need to look that up. And th not to be confused with the Tibor Negi Art Gallery in New York City. Two di completely different things. Anyway, Tibor Negi, one of my favorite city painters, and Jeremy Mann, who is, should be familiar to all of you uh, Yanks. So their, their ghost... Uh, inform me, inform my painting a little bit while I paint. While I paint, so... Uh, just explosion of color down there, explosion of light. Which is really convenient, by the way, because all paintings are about play of light. And sometimes you have to make up the light because it's just not happening in real life. That's always a challenge, always a real unusual challenge when, when that happens. But today, no such problem at all. No such problem. The, the, the explosion of light is totally happening out there to my right. I don't have to make anything up today. It's all happening right in front of me. Glorious day. Uh, good day to be alive. Um, okay, this is wrong. 
Okay. This whole thing that that the the perp, that's supposed to be a magazine rack, and I just realized just now the whole thing's supposed to be down about here. Witness my distress. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for that smart aleck response, but um, some of you t students really need to see that. Um, one of the differences between me and you is when you make a mistake, you start beating yourself up, saying, "Ah, oh, suck a look a look a look." When I make a mistake, I go, "Hey, yeah, whatever. What do you expect?" Of course, I'm painting like crazy. I'm drawing like crazy. Of course, you're going to make mistakes. So, um, don't beat yourself up. It's all part of the business. All part of the business. That's, of course, why I strongly recommend blobbing in a painting instead of blocking in a painting. Do not block in your paintings. You block in, you lock in. Instead, blob in your paintings. Okay, now, here's a trick. By all these people are looking at me think either that man is mentally unstable because he's talking to himself <laughs> or there's somebody on my camera Whew, there's somebody on my camera <laughs> okay here's the trick if the, if i want to remove anything that's still wet just take a damp brush good news there was basically no wetness on there so um i'm safe to go to um by the way, just last week, um, I discovered how to retrieve all your comments that you're making while I'm painting. I'm sorry it took me so long to learn that, but I just learned that uh, a couple weeks ago or last week or something. So um, before, before, I, before I end this little broadcast, I'll, I'll go back and pick up all your comments. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and shoot. Shoot with the questions. And I'll get to as many of them as I can. Or comments, either one. Okay, I'm assuming most of you have seen me before. For those who haven't seen me before, a little bit of explanation. A big part of my painting process is uh, I'm painting in, a, in transparent acrylics, acrylics which, with a lot of medium in it. And um, a big part of my process is to create sufficient chaos in the underpainting so that I have lots to respond to in the overpainting. I don't know if overpainting is a word, but it is now. We made it up around here, okay? As opposed to underpainting. Uh, so I want to create enough chaos to respond to uh, in the later stages. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for just a few minutes. So tell you what, let me get your comments. Before I leave, T. Bournet, he's fantastic. One of my favorite city painters. Thank you, Toby. Yeah, it's fun to have people know who you're talking about. Toby in Finland, my friend. Wow, I haven't been to Finland. I've been, I tell you, I've been to the Baltic. I've been to Bornholm, part of, uh, part of uh, Denmark. And one of the most, probably the most enchanting place I've ever been in my life. So not too far from you. Going to have to paint some <laughs> Yes. Uh, there are no mistakes. They're beautiful accidents. Exactly right, Ice T. That is exactly right. That was Bob Ross's best best line is happy little accidents. Absolutely. Uh, good line. Yeah. <laughs> what is that awesome easel? Thanks, Phil. Thanks for asking. Um, here, before I go, let me take just a minute and show you guys my easel. That's a very good question. First of all, I had to build a lot of it myself. Um, it's a basic, basically an H, it's called an H style easel. Sorry, I'm shaking you all over. Um, it's an H style, yes, I'm trying to let you see it. Now, the parts that I've added to it are this tray that holds all my paints. Um, bought a box and then added a whole bunch of stuff to it. Added a way to attach it here. And that box down there holds my materials. And on a really windy day, that holds a car battery, which weighs 75 pounds, that holds the whole thing down. I put wheels on it, so it's a cart, and so on. Um, I've often thought about whether I should, you know, uh, patent my easel and try to sell it. But my, my fear is there's so few people who paint this way. I'm not sure there's a market. But anyway, thanks for asking. Uh, Phyllis, that's a very good question. Um, find somebody, build your own. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let this dry just a few minutes. I'll be back in just a few minutes, friends. Thanks for watching.